Ever since I was a young boy, I've always been different. Not psychotic, demonic, or anything like that. Just not quite like the rest. I look different, act different, dress different, and I think different. This made it easy for the beautiful people of the world to mess with me a lot. They used to bother me growing up, but as I've gotten older, not so much. Now I just look at the source and think, screw them, they'll be dead soon. I've never been too lucky with the ladies either, so after years of failed relationships, I found myself alone, friendless, and living in a 20-year-old trailer that I'm renting from a friend. It doesn't really matter who. Anyway, I thought to myself, I'm tired of being alone. I could probably get another girlfriend, but she'd just get on my nerves, and we'd break up. Same old song and dance. No. This time, I want a companion. Someone who is happy to see me when I come home from work. Someone who likes to go for walks. Someone to ride shotgun in the car. Someone who will love me for who I am, not for what I have to offer them. I'm gonna get a dog. The very next day, I got up, hopped in my car, and drove to the local ASPCA to get myself a dog. I walked in, told the lady behind the desk what I was looking for. Nothing big, small dog, a lap dog, so to speak. She said, sure, right this way. She took me into the kennel area and showed me many types of little dogs. Mini pinchers, chihuahuas, even a few Pomeranians, etc. They were all lovely dogs, but none of them really seemed to click with me. Then, out of the corner of my eye, at the very end of the cages, all by itself, sat a metal box. The box was fully enclosed, with a tiny barred window in the door, resembling a prison cell. I said to the lady, what is that? She looked at me as if I wasn't supposed to ask and said, that's Roscoe. We're not really sure what kind of dog he is. He's been returned to us several times due to behavioral issues. He's scheduled to be put down later today. That's why he's in the box. I'd like to see him, I said. She said, I don't think that's a good idea. Starting to get annoyed, I said, the sign out front says all dogs ready for adoption. He's in here. He can be adopted. Now I want to see him. She said, yes, sir, with your going to regret a tone, and took me over to the box, unlocked the door, opened it, and then I saw him. This little guy looked rough. His brown fur was matted to his body, crusty pieces of I don't know what in the corners of his eyes like he'd been crying. His nails were a bit long and sharp. His eyes were jet black with the slightest hint of red in them. To be quite honest, he looked like he'd just crawled out of the sewer and smelled like it too. He had an odor that reminded me of the summers I spent helping my uncle at his funeral home. He smelled like death. But he was friendly. He ran out of the box, ran up to me, let me pick him up, and licked my face with what had been at least ten minutes. He was wagging his tail and just going crazy with excitement, and so was I. I told the lady, this guy ain't dying today. Roscoe has a new home. A look of worry fell over her face. After filling out some paperwork and getting his dog license, I took Roscoe home. First on the agenda was a bath. He was rather calm in the bath, seemed to enjoy it really. After that, I dried him off and brushed him out. I had to use one of my brushes since I didn't have a dog brush. We went to the local pet store next. I won't mention the name of the place due to legal matters. I'll just say the people there were smart about dogs. We all had the necessities needed to take care of my new friend. The drive home started out normal, just driving down the road. I've always been a cautious driver, always doing the speed limit or below. Apparently, the guy in the car behind me didn't like it, and sped up to pass me. Everyone usually does. He pulled alongside of me and yelled, Get the hell out of the way, moron! Learn how to drive! Roscoe went crazy, barking and jumping up on the dash as the guy passed, growling, showing all his teeth, drooling and clawing the dash. The red tint in his eyes was becoming more apparent now. He began banging his head against the windshield in a crazed attempt to get the guy. 
hitting it so hard it split his forehead open, blood running down his face on the windshield and the dash. Oh my god, what the hell is happening? Roscoe, calm down. Stop. Roscoe, stop. I finally had to pull on the side of the road. Roscoe's still frantic. I threw an old shirt over him so he couldn't see, grabbed him, telling him it's okay over and over again. His body went limp. I thought he was dead. I pulled the shirt from over him, and the second I did, his eyes opened, and he was wide-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready to play, like nothing ever happened. What the hell? I took the shirt and held it over his forehead, stopping the blood. I washed him up fully when we got home, cleaning the dash and windshield as well. We spent the rest of the day playing in the yard and hanging around the house so he could get used to his new home. The trailer park I live in isn't in the best places to live. The lot rent is cheap, but that's the only good thing about it. It's a dirt road, in a U-shape with trailers running parallel with the road on both sides. This is apparently where the term trailer trash came from. It's not that the people are bad or anything, it's just cleanliness isn't their way of life. Old refrigerators, car parts, and various other piles of junk clutter their yards. The trailer at the end, in front of the park, has been raided a couple of times by local police, and there's always cars pulling in and out of there. I think they're selling drugs, but that's none of my business. In the middle of the park is what the park manager calls a playground. It consists of an old beat-up swing set, a rickety metal slide, and a sandbox that most of the cats around here use as a litter box. Most of the older folks here just sit out there and talk all day. No kids ever play there. Who can blame them? It's a lawsuit waiting to happen. The night I realized Roscoe was the perfect friend for me came about two months later. That night, while taking him for a walk around the park before going to bed, we passed the old playground. Something told me not to cut through there. Just complete the circle around the park and go home but it was close to my house and I was really tired. At the playground, there were two guys I'd never seen before, in black hoodies, just hanging out. One on the swing, the other on the slide. As I passed them, I heard the guy on the swing say, nice dog, can I pet him? I said, sure. As the one guy bent down to pet Roscoe, I heard the cocking of a gun and felt the barrel press hard against the back of my neck. Give me your freaking money or you're dead, the guy from the slide who now had a gun said. The other guy leaped up and grabbed me and slammed me against the slide, dripping the leash in the process. What happened next sent shivers down my spine and filled me with excitement at the same time. Roscoe went insane. His eyes turned bright red, skipping and growling and clawing apart and went straight for the guy's neck. He leapt up from a sitting position and grabbed the guy's throat, digging his claws into the side of his neck and ripping out his voice box with his teeth, blood spewing everywhere as the guy fell to the ground. Roscoe still attached. The guy with the gun ran like a bitch. The guy on the ground was gasping for air, blood pouring out of his mouth and the hole in his throat as he choked on it. He tried to hit Roscoe to get him off, but my boy was relentless, biting and clawing at the guy's face, ripping and tearing his eyes out, part of his cheek and his entire nose, down to the socket. Maybe I'm wrong for this, but I don't care. After years of being messed with by assholes like this, it was great to finally get revenge. I started chanting Roscoe on, get him boy, get him, kill that piece of crap. And that's just what he did. As the guy took his last breath, Roscoe stepped back and fell over, his body limp and lifeless, blood covering his snout with pieces of flesh and eyeballs hanging from his mouth. Two seconds later, he sprung back to life, happy and energetic, chewing on the eyeball pieces like a play toy. Good boy, Roscoe, I said as I picked him up, staring at the mutilated corpse that lay at my feet and smiled. Screw him. Let the cats eat the rest, I said. I would carried Roscoe home, washed him off, and fed him the biggest steak I had. Raw, of course, just how he likes it. I had the best night's sleep that I've ever had that night. Roscoe right by my side. 
Homicide detectives and police flooded the park the day after, going door to door looking for witnesses as to what happened. Miss Jacobson, from three trailers down, found the body. She had to be given oxygen and a ride in the ambulance to get checked out. It traumatized her so much. I'm sorry, Miss Jacobson. I really am. When the cops came to my door, I, of course, saw nothing, and Roscoe was on his best behavior, lying on the living room floor pretending to be asleep. I watched the coroner carry the body away. The cops finished up and went away. I asked my neighbor what happened, and she said, Some guy was mauled to death last night. The cops think it was some kind of wild animal that escaped from the circus that came through about a year ago and attacked the guy. There have been numerous bodies found in the area with wounds, such as the ones they found today. They're writing it off as that. Roscoe and I couldn't be happy together. He has a loving home, and I get to seek revenge. So if any of you assholes from my past are reading this, I haven't forgotten. I will find you. I will get you. Well, Roscoe will. He's not a bad dog. He's just very... Protective. Good boy, Roscoe. Good boy.